So we're going to go to the Oz first. Yes. Um, look, a Britney comeback, and I thought that this would be the biggest story of the day. Obviously, the conservatorship of Britney Spears ending after 13 years. It's coming to an end. That's great. But overrun hospitals ill-prepared. Yeah. I feel like I have seen this story every yeah. night this week yeah. in every state and jurisdictions. Uh, I agree. Now, Natasha Robinson is saying that hospitals are not going to cope. Doctors have warned that the health system is so overburdened by COVID-19 the people are dying from other treatable conditions as patients are stuck in ambulances and the corridors of emergency departments unable to access hospital beds are growing. It's a discussion paper that's doing the rounds by top doctors around the country and it feels like Groundhog Day, doesn't it? Well, it feels like just any other day in Western Australia, right? Yeah. And I'm not being tried in saying that if you live in this state, you know that ambulance ramping is a significant problem mm -hmm. and we were just talking about it off air. Mm -hmm. in, in the broader context, I mean, we're chasing 5,000 hours a month and climbing. And yeah. someone I was talking to recently described ambulances as sort of medical camper vans outside hospitals. Right. And it's a growing problem. Mm. Can't comment specifically on other states, but, you know, show us your surplus. Yeah. You know, yeah. your ooh-la-la 5.5 bill that is not being spent where it needs to be spent. So yeah. this comes to me as no surprise. It's, it's like you, I feel like I have read this story in different iterations mm. over the past year. We have had... 20 months. Yeah. 20 months to get to get ready. And how long is it going to take before the politicians or the bureaucrats start paying attention to the frontline workers when you've got the AMA who have been screaming about this for over a year? Top doctors, yeah. what more has to be done? I mean, in Perth we had a child die yeah. in a world-class children's facility. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And for those who don't know, the Perth Children's Hospital is the most advanced paediatric mm. teaching hospital in the Southern Hemisphere. Mm. And, of course, that tragic um, death of the little girl there. Look, I, I don't know is the short answer. I think the AMA has its own problems from my perspective in terms, in terms of the fact that it is essentially a political lobby group for yeah. doctors yeah. and sometimes likes to have a buck each way. Mm. Um, I, 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 I think health is from a portfolio, portfolio perspective, often the poison chalice. Mm. It's, uh, it's a bottomless pit, um, but when you ignore it, yeah, this is where we end and up. That's, I think what one thing is what you hear from doctors specifically on the front line in mm. EDs and triage. Yeah. It's not so much you can throw as much money as you like yeah. at it, but if it isn't used wisely and sustainably... That's it. That's and also, it. hospitals are state responsibility. Mm. This is not a federal responsibility, although, you know, in this state you'd think everything was a federal responsibility. <laughs> if, if it goes you, wrong. If it goes wrong. Yeah. If it goes right, oh, brilliant yeah. government. <laughs> if it goes wrong, it's Gladys's fault or Scott's fault. Commonwealth's fault. But this is, this is a, a, a perfect example that something is hand on my heart, 100% a state management responsibility yeah. and it's a mess. Yeah, absolutely. Now, look, this is a story that has been bubbling away on the Twitter sphere for the past yes. 24 hours. Yes. I really wanted to get your take on it and I'm glad that it is on the front page <laughs> of the Oz tomorrow. Sophie Ellsworth's piece, Woke, yeah. Wrath, Rabble, Censored Rose Hansen Podcast. That is quite the headline, it's guys. A, it's, a, it's a mouth one. <laughs> Faced with a wrath of social media followers, journalist and TV presenter Jessica Rowe bowed to demands that she retract a seemingly innocuous podcast interview with Pauline Hansen, a move that not only inflamed those who saw in it hallmarks of a pylon. Within hours of Roe encouraging her followers to listen to her one-on-one -on -one chat with the Queensland Senator on Wednesday afternoon, a few were erupted on social media by late that night and she requested that it be removed. What's your take on this, oh, Lava? I just think, why on earth would she bow to a Twitter rabble? Yeah. It's a podcast. It's a discussion. If we cannot have... If we, are, if we don't have the nuance as a society to say... I don't particularly like what that person stands for, but I'm going to listen to what that person has mm. to say. That's either going to confirm my view that I don't like what they have to say yeah. or I might be challenged and think, oh, that's that's unusual. Mm. I, I'm finding myself agreeing with that person. But either way, what what, what did she have to apologise for? Pauline Hanson is an elected member of parliament mm. in this country. And Whether like we like it or not. And whether Twitter rabble, let me, let's check the stats. What is it, 7% of the Australian yeah. population? 7, 0, 7 and I'm on Twitter. As you all know, my dog has a Twitter account. I'll give you the tip. He doesn't tweet for himself. <laughs> this is what we're talking about here. This is the, this is the cohort that yeah. she responded to. And I, and I, I understand how it, the sense it, that it can be magnified, mm. like the sense that it is, yes, it is right, like yeah. a roaring lion, not actually a roaring lion. Yep. All she had to do was take herself off Twitter for a week and, yeah. and the next thing would have come along. Do you think it's because of the people that did uh, issue those uh, the commentary? I mean, it was mm. Australian of the Year, Grace Tate, sure. leading the but charge. she's not right 
her opinions aren't automatically valid exactly. and right. Exactly. Um, but also, I would have liked to have seen Jess rather than say, oh, I asked her about everything other than politics. But like you said, she's an elected member. Of Parliament, her, correct. There are things that are very much wrong I with agree. Queensland. Push her on that I stuff. agree, I agree. I, think, I mean, I didn't listen to the podcast. My week's been mad. I didn't listen to the podcast. But as a fundamental principle... Mm of a free, we're still a free-ish society, right? <laughs> and we still hold dear these ideas that, you know, um, respectful disagreement is the heart of a functioning mm. democracy or a really important pillar of a functioning democracy. And I saw someone say, oh, no, if you don't, you know, you're just giving her a platform. Well, she has a platform. She's an elected senator. It's whether you, the Senate. It's called the Senate, exactly right. I mean, you could say the same of any, you know, who gets to decide... Which, which Twitter personality, yeah. or which person gets to decide who is acceptable to be interviewed and who is not? Yeah. I mean, it's a nonsense proposition. Yeah. Grace Tame has a fantastic platform as Australian of the Year. She is allowed to prosecute her views. And does she, she represent every survivor of sexual abuse? She does not. Yeah. Does she does she represent the views of a generation? I believe she does. I believe she she is very reflective of, of her own cohort. Mm. But to, to insist that someone not be interviewed because you don't like them and you think that they are wrong, whatever, it's, I'm sorry, that is just a, that's a fundamental weakness, I believe. Yeah. For, for everyone, that was not directed at Ms Tame, that yeah, was directed at everybody. Yeah, absolutely.